this is Lori and welcome to my series on adventures in soldering. In this uh, episode, we're going to be making a retro game kit today. Well, I've been including this slide and in all of this uh, set of episodes because I want to make sure people understand that I'm not presenting this as the best way to solder or even an expert in soldering. Um, I did this series to learn how to solder better and uh, so I'm a beginner and uh, if I can't be a good example then I'll just have to be a horrible warning. All right so uh, this is the uh, kit that we're going to make. Uh, this is I guess the third kit that I've done in this series and this kit is uh, a little more pricey. I was trying to keep the kits that I was uh, starting with uh, closer to 10 bucks because if I mess them up then I might not feel so bad. So this one was 20 bucks. Um, I have seen it cheaper. There, It's provided by a, a lot of different uh, Chinese manufacturers. Um, but and this is the one I bought and um, it's, it's pretty nice actually when you look at it. It has a really nice uh, microprocessor on here and um, you know you get a lot for, for 20 bucks. So I was happy with that. It's enclosed in an acrylic case too. So that's pretty nice. Uh, most of the other kits that I've seen uh, that are in the more $10 range wouldn't have uh, an enclosure already built for it. So, um, you know, that's probably why it costs so much. And this is what you'll get in the kit. So you can see the acrylic here and uh, you get buttons and a battery. You can, you can power it. Uh, via USB type cable or you can put um, some uh, AAA batteries in it and you get a couple of LED matrices and a seven segment display to keep track of, uh, of your high score. And it has a really nice uh, uh, instruction manual with lots of good pictures. Uh, the English is uh, pretty decent and I think it's pretty easy to follow. So. Uh, I didn't have any uh, issues uh, getting this one done in terms of the instructions for, for the kit. And then this is the circuit, which um, is in that little instruction manual, so it's pretty hard to read. Um, so uh, if you're uh, into being able to understand the circuit diagram, <laughs> this one was a little difficult, but I'm sure you could look around to, uh, to find it somewhere else, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show the one thing that was already pre-done was uh, the microprocessor here on the kit. And I, I did look and find the um, data sheet for this uh, microprocessor. It looks like it has a lot of potential. Um, not sure whether uh, you can reprogram it. Um, I was wondering maybe if the pins over here might be for that. Uh, but I really don't know much about that, uh, this chip. I've never worked with it before. So, uh, um, you know, I'm just kind of going to use it the way it comes programmed and uh, not not spend too much time studying it or something like that. I mean, the goal of this series is just to practice soldering, so um, not to practice programming and so forth. So this is the kit. Let's get going. Well, it's time to get some uh, soldering done on this project. It's pretty interesting and maybe, I guess, technically the most complicated. So the first thing we're going to do is put the USB socket on. And it, it does tell us that we don't need to solder these three uh, little pins in the middle there. Um, it, says, it says we're going to use the USB cable only as a power supply, so we don't need to, uh, to solder that. All right, so got the socket here, and it'll go on right there like that. And let's look and see. Yeah, that's... That's in pretty good. Um, of course, it's going to fall out if we don't do something. So I'm going to use my high temperature tape, I think, to uh, put it on. Keep it on there. And we'll just put that on nice and tight. And it feels pretty tight. Yeah. All right. I'll put it this way, Maybe like that, and see if we got it kind of wedged in here pretty good. So don't move on me. I'll tin up the tip just a little bit. Yeah, 
That looks great. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn on the fan, and hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. I've had pretty good success with that so far. Yeah, we'll bring in our solder. I'm just going to heat up this pad a little bit. Put a little solder in there. Should have got it in there good. Just a little bit more. Okay. Next one. Be good. Mm, not very good. All right. Mm. The pan didn't heat it. A little bit more on this one. Okay, well, I guess it looks all right. Let's see how it went. See if it's in there firmly. Not too hot either. All right. Okay, I think that's that's pretty good. Well, I realized um, I missed two little pins right here. The three in the middle we didn't need to solder, but there's two little ones and I missed that. So we'll need to solder those. Okay, those were really small. That was not a very good joint. Let's see if I can do a little bit better. Light up my iron temp a little bit. I had it down. I think I might got it a little too low. Things don't seem to want to flow. Yeah, I think that was the problem. I took a closer look in my uh My magnifying glass and I did a little bit of clean up. <laughs> this one's not very pretty but uh, the other one actually looks pretty good. I got a little too much solder on there I think is the problem so I, I went a little too heavy with that one. But it's in here. It's on pretty straight. Looks connected so I'm happy enough with that. Okay now we're gonna put our uh, LED matrices on there. So this is the uh, instructions. And you can see they, they did a lot of work to make sure you put this on in the right direction. And I'm familiar with this because I did a bicolor matrix that I got from Adafruit and I had to put it on a, um, a little board to use for prototyping and to program it more easily. It had a nice chip on it to handle, handle programming the matrix. So I've, I've, I've soldered these successfully before. They look a little intimidating because they're kind of small, but, um, as I've said before, I've been pretty comfortable with header kind of things because that's what I've mostly soldered over the last two years. So I think this will go okay, and we'll do one at a time. It tells you to take off the film, but I ain't taking off the film until we're all done with the soldering. It'll protect the surface of it, so I don't know why one would take off the film now. All right, so we just need to make sure we get this lined up right, but with all these arrows, I think we'll do it correctly. All right, let's get going. All right, this time I just laid the board down. So I figured that would make sure that it it just stayed flat in there rather than trying to tape them on and have it up suspended. And we'll see whether that's a good idea or not. And then I, I've used my little things to kind of make sure that the board doesn't slip on me as I press to do the soldering. I'll just uh, start off with the corners and then um, I won't film the whole thing. Um, I'll film the corners here and then do the rest offline. Go for this corner first. Look at that pad heated up. Yeah. 
Might have been a little too little. There we go. And we'll do this corner next. Yep. And do this corner. Yeah. And this last corner. Yeah, that looks great. And I'll do the other matrix. corner here. Okay, we got uh, we got that done. And uh, I think it doesn't look too bad. Okay, here's our next uh, step. We're going to put uh, put this piece on. And you can't get this one in wrong cuz the number of pins is different on each side. So um, yeah, and it it's going to be a pretty similar uh, process to the other one. So we'll get that done next. All right, we'll go for the corners again. Well, we have that one done as well. Next step is to put the capacitor in there. And we have it right here. So, uh, nice thing about these is they tell you on here that this the short leg is the negative one. You can see it on the side as well. And then the PCB is pretty nicely labeled plus and minus. So we'll just stick it through like that. Push it into place. And give it a little bit of a bend and get it soldered then we'll clip it off so that should be pretty easy and it's about the same height as the other one so I'm just gonna lay it down flat again and uh, kind of wedge it in there all right here we go Flow that just a little bit. And you'll come in this way. And the other one. And just a little bit more. Take the excess up the leg. Oh. Easy peasy. Okay, next step is to put all the button switches. It calls it the keys in place. Um, so you see, I have a bunch of them down here. That's kind of what they look like. You got these little four legs. It doesn't matter the orientation. Um, as far as I can tell, there shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, so I'm going to do it kind of in two steps, and maybe I'll just show the first couple getting done. I use some of my tape to hold it really flat. It almost stays in, but they're a little bit shorter than in the top of this so when I flip it over they they can move around a little bit so I just put a little tape on there to, to kind of get them uh, in there tightly and then I'm just going to set it down like this and, and wedge it in so that's the idea and we'll get those soldered we'll, uh, we'll work in this tighter area right here first to put a little bit more solder than we have been putting on things because a little bit bigger holes that's pretty good
Alright, that gets one of them done, so uh, I'll do the rest offline and show you the results. Okay, um, I'll show off uh, the first two that I did, and uh, I think they came out alright. And they're nice and flush, you can see, with the board, so tape held them just perfectly. And I just finished the, the four-way here, so let's just take this tape off and check them out. And, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, one stopped. So I might try to, I might try to push that one through, see if I can't fix it. Maybe you can see it's in there a little cockeyed. All the others are flush, but that one didn't, didn't hold nice and tight. Okay, so it's this one here. Yeah, these little ones. I'm going to try to reflow them and see if I can't uh, push that back in. Well, as I was trying to record, I I missed uh, catching the buzzer. So uh, I got the buzzer in here, and I have it already uh, soldered on. It, it went very smoothly. It's nice and flat, and you can see it here. So it uh, looks good all on there. Next step is the power switch. And it tells us there is a little uh, gap here. When we look underneath the switch, we can see that. So we'll need to put that uh, that gap so that it fits right there. All right. All right. Here we go. Catch this one. Maybe this way. Good. I'll just get the rest of them. Okay, all done. It's right there. And uh, proud to say <laughs> that it's flat. Oh, just one mistake so far. Oh, well, I guess it's good practice. Battery box. So we'll use this uh, this part of the acrylic. And we'll bring in our battery box. Got a lot of length, probably more than we need. Even nuts and bolts. Alright, so next step is to attach that wire. And solder it in. And you're supposed to cut it to the right length. It's stranded wire, so I always find that a little difficult because it's hard to r get them wound back together and they just kind of flail out, but um, that's the idea. So uh, we'll try to do that next. All right, I decided just to try to do one at a time. It, it kept popping out on me. So I guess I'm just going to try to fill this in with some solder as best I can. Maybe a good sized glob. All right, well, that one worked okay. All right, we'll try the black one now. I got it positioned. I'm gonna fill in the hole there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. That was a bit fiddly. Okay, the next step is to put these uh, put these in with these. And then a screw on the top to hold the uh, acrylic base plate on. Let me give that a go. Okay, so you can see the screws. This is the acrylic on top with the battery. And then the pillars are here to create spacer for the, for the top pieces. And I think now's the time for our, uh, our protective covers to come off. So we'll take them off. Um, they're pretty tight. There we go. So one one done, and then one for the for the seven segment display. Okay, it's looking pretty good. All we gotta do is put the rest of the uh, 
acrylic case around it and I think we're done. Okay. Tells us now we can go ahead and install the um, the caps for our button switches. And uh, there's also a little uh, cap for the um, for the power switch. That was a pretty tight fit and so I actually had to sand the inside of it a little bit, file it a little bit with my my file and I I got it to go on. So that's that's good. And now we'll just uh, you know, we'll pop on these uh, on these caps. Like that. So I'll finish that up and we'll get the last step done. Okay, now we're going to install the pieces around the edges here. And uh, I guess that one looks like it goes right there for that. I'm not sure why there's a an opening on this side though. Uh, does it matter? Yeah, that definitely doesn't work on that side. So put that one there. We'll put this one here. Maybe this box works for multiple projects or something. The company makes up in there like that, that, and like that. All right. And then last is to mount the top of our buttons. Get them all in here. Boy, it's a little. <laughs> to get everything to line up. Oh, we're so close. Come on. Lined up on one end here. There. Still not down on this end. Right. Okay, here. Might seem to be fitting there. Oh, and that button. My cockeyed button is that. Oh, there we go. I got it past that. There. That was the problem. All right. And we'll get these last pieces screwed in. We're stopping now. <laughs> Don't want to lose this fit. There we go. And I didn't test this before putting it all together, so we have to take it apart if things aren't working. All right. Oh, this one button. It's an issue. It doesn't press. It's too tight. All right. Well, I'm going to have to clear a little more space for it, I think. Let me see what I can do. All right. I, I finally got it. Uh, I sanded it around that button a fair amount. I used um, kind of a rounded file to, to uh, get that done. And uh, got it to fit, and now the button seems to work similarly to the others, nice and smooth. Alright, so let's give it a turn on. Well, it comes on. And that's Tetris. And there's four other games that I'll have to learn about how to play them. <clears throat> There's no instructions in the manual over here about that, so I guess we'll go back. I know a little bit about Tetris. So let's, uh, okay, that started it. That moves it left or right. Okay, we got one. All right. Oh, that changes it. Okay. Well, that wasn't a very good choice, but... Um, I'm going to put it that way, I guess. I'm going to fit over here. 
Okay, so I guess it's working. So thanks for uh, joining me on my misadventures in soldering this time. Uh, definitely paid a little price there for the button not uh, being on straight, so got to definitely work harder on that. Um, yeah, this looks fun. I'm going to go have some fun and try to learn how to play these games. Oh, I, I guess I lost. So thanks for joining me.